guys welcome back to my channel and thank you for joining me today I wanted to give a very brief but what I feel is a really important video on some safety as well as some tips on how to shoot the solar eclipse this coming Monday we're gonna have a very exciting day we're gonna have a total solar eclipse and while these technically happen every 18 months um, this total solar eclipse for some of you has not happened for decades or more so this is an extremely phenomenal event and one in which if you are a photographer you know that you've been planning and scouting out locations and you know what i'm talking about you're ready so i wanted to go over a couple things for those of you who i know at least when i was first starting to shoot and i had my first eclipse i had no idea what i was doing and nearly burned my camera sensor in process so I wanted to make a video to help everybody out that is interested in getting some beautiful pictures as well as really experiencing this beautiful moment um, for those of us who love astro and lunar and solar um, photography and just are fascinated by that. So I have a couple things that I wanted to go over. First of all, I will go over some settings that I feel might work, but I do want to make sure that you understand that the settings can vary based on where you're located in the world also based on the weather conditions, the cloud cover, what kind of a camera you're shooting with, what kind of aperture you have, um, as well as, you know, whether you're using a Sony, a Nikon, what kind of lens, etc. So just take my settings kind of, you know, with a grain of salt, if you, if you may. Um, so as you know, there are several phases, or maybe you don't know, there are several phases with an eclipse. We have the partial eclipse, then we have what's called the Bailey's beads, the diamond ring and then totality and these are different phases that you will actually get to see on monday so the totality we may not be able to see in in full down here where i am in, in florida at the moment but these are the full um phases that will be occurring on monday so i'm going to go over all of them and also the different settings that you would use at different points of the eclipse First off though is safety. Whether you're using a phone to try to shoot, if that's what you have, um, or you're using your DSLR or a, any other kind of camera that you have, very important that you do not just take that camera, put it on a tripod or handhold it and shoot at the sun because you will burn your sensor. There's a very high probability with the heat coming off of that uh, the solar, the sun, that you can burn your sensor. Um, so please make sure, not only is it not safe for your eyes, you can go blind looking directly at the uh, the sun. Uh, you also have to make sure you use solar filters and the solar filters you can actually attach onto the lens. They are no different than uh, ND and you know um, your polarizing filters for photographers. They are the thread, um, the same threading as your other filters. So for example, I'm gonna be shooting with my 100 to 400 G Master, my Sony, and I believe that one um, off the top of my head, I believe it was a 77 um, filter. So I have a solar filter that is specifically for that lens that is a telephoto and a 1.4 teleconverter that we'll, I will be using. But you have to make sure you do put on an actual solar filter to protect your lens and also to protect your eyes before looking through your camera. Um, you also will want to make sure that you're wearing solar um, eclipse glasses that are available online. I've also seen them in several stores. And basically those have the solar film that many of these lenses, um, the, the filters are made from the solar film, then it's basically a safety, you know, uh, feature that basically filters out those harmful uh, rays before they actually do the damage to your retina. And uh, so that is a mandatory thing you need to make sure that you're wearing the safety glasses, the um, Eclipse safety solar glasses, and that your camera has on the solar filter. Um, for iPhones, they do have those solar filters. I actually ordered a pack of um, Eclipse glasses and it actually had as a freebie uh, for my iPhone. It had a, a filter on there. But if you don't have one, you could take the um, Eclipse glasses and attach that same um, portion to your camera filter. You know, you could make one. Um, they say that, you know, some iPhone models don't need it, but if it was me, I would use it no matter what just to be on the safe side um, on top of which just to protect your eyes to protect your camera you know you you, you just should <laughs> so just do it um, 
as far as your camera settings are going to go, um, uh, you're going to want to make sure you're shooting from a tripod. That's absolute because the earth is moving. Um, the sun is moving, you know, everything is moving around you. Um, and you need a very sturdy tripod. So you need to make sure that your, your tripod setup is a strong and sturdy tripod. And if you're in an environment in which you have wind or other things that are affecting possibly your shot, you may want a sandbag or even camera bag weight down your tripod um, when setting up for shooting. Um, you'll want to make sure that your camera is in manual, obviously, and I personally shoot in RAW. Um, if you're a RAW and JPEG shooter, that's fine, but you do want to use the RAW files later so that you can get the most out of your images in post-editing. Um, you'll want to use a remote trigger so that you're not touching your camera and causing any camera shake. So definitely using a remote timer, remote trigger for your shots. That's to me a mandatory thing if you're um, a professional shooter you will want to definitely use that um, as far as settings what I would do is because there's a lot of light coming from the Sun I probably would start my ISO off somewhere between 1 and 200 um, you know obviously this is going to be a guideline um, for me around 1 to 200 is good but I know other shooters I'm a Sony shooter I have my um, a7r so I think for other shooters sometimes they can go all the way up to 400 um, you know and be fine so just see how you know your settings are um and as far as the shutter speed probably i would start around one over one thousandth of a one thousand of a second um this can vary based on the filter density and the darkness of your your filter so you may need to just adjust that a little bit um I would use spot metering as a setting when I'm setting up my camera. Um, and I would also make sure that my aperture, you know, for me, somewhere between that seven, eight is probably where I would, I would end up with my aperture. Um, so the different settings that you're going to use um, may change slightly from when you're in partial, which will be the majority of, of your time to right before we go into the totality and obviously this will vary based on where you are so there's two little um be very beautiful moments that occur um and i'm gonna try and um, upload an image that will show you what these are one is bailey's beads bailey's beads occurs and it's the last movement of light um just as the shine of the, the light is coming through the craters of the moon and it's right before you get to the, to the totality okay so it's that last moment of light and um what you're going to want to do is you'll still want to keep those solar filters on to protect your lens and your eyes but you may want to just slightly um uh, adjust your, your shooting to like continuous high and you may want to adjust the shutter speed a little bit if you're getting too much blur you may want to adjust the ISO based on um, how the shutter speed is reacting um, for me the time before that the diamond ring is one of my favorites and that's when the moon is almost uh, covering completely the Sun and you'll see a very very dramatic lighting the contrast between the two and I might try something like a 16th of a second there um, with my shutter. Again, this will be dependent on you know your camera settings, but these are just some things maybe to note. Um, and I've got my personal notes here for when I go out and shoot as well. Um, so you know, bracketing to me at this point in in the eclipse would be just a no-brainer you would have to be bracketing that way you're gonna have a lot more images to work through you'll have something to create a nice HDR um, image with later and you'll have a lot of different shutter speeds from which then you know you can kind of sift through and decide you know what your final image um, will be made up from you'll want to leave that filter on during Bailey's beads during the partial and during the diamond ring the time where you will remove it will be during totality um, if you're lucky enough to see totality and that is when you'll see the darkness and that's when the total eclipse occurs and at that point you can allow more light in adjusting your ISO a little bit um, and then of course adjust your shutter speed um, so maybe you might want to go a little bit, you know, maybe up to, you know, I don't know, you could play around anything from one over a hundred all the way up to one over a thousand with the shutter speed. Um, and you could, you know, go anywhere from the 100 to 200 with the ISO. Um, I know my camera will go all the way down to, I think 50 ISO. So again, 
playing around with these speeds, playing around with the ISO, getting really familiar with your buttons, getting really familiar with all of your settings before we enter the solar eclipse on Monday is absolutely imperative. I would recommend you do it in the dark. I know that sounds crazy, but um, one thing I have learned doing astrotography is um, learning how to use my camera settings without looking at them. So being able to adjust things on my camera from feel. So that's one piece of advice I would give you because if you're constantly looking at a button and looking for where this is, where's my ISO, where's my shutter speed, um, how do I adjust my aperture, how do I do this? If you're doing that based on looking on your camera, you're missing out on what's going on in front of you. So my best piece of advice, if you're really into sky photography, if you're really into astro, northern lights, lunar, solar, get used to looking at your dial in the dark. And um, this is as simple as uh, closing your closet door and going inside <laughs> with your camera. Um, these are just some tips that I can give to you that I think will really, really help. Um, I wish somebody had told me them a long time ago, but I've learned them as I've gone. And um, so I'm gonna be putting out more videos like this. So if you found this video helpful today, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment below. Let me know where you're gonna be on Monday. Where are you shooting? Make me super jelly and um, let me know what lens you're gonna be shooting with, what camera are you using. Um, I know if you have only a cell phone or an iPhone, Android, you can take pictures of this beautiful eclipse. Um, there are different tutorials online that will um, go over some different modes and some settings. Uh, so don't feel that you can't, but my personal advice is make yourself a solar um, filter out of one of the, the glasses for your camera because those things are too expensive to avoid um, a sensor burn and um, safety first always safety first you know no shot is ever worth it uh, that's my philosophy so um, with all that being said if you have any questions or comments please comment below uh, always here to help and uh, I just set up my little office in here and I'm gonna be starting to do some more tutorial based instruction and really helping to get you shooting. I've had some requests for beginner classes, classes for kids, and um, iPhone photography, and what do I do with my DSLR? I don't know what to do. So I'm going to be starting some different classes, and if there is a class you would like to see or a session that I can make for you, please comment below so I know what my fans and followers um, need and how I can better help you. And uh, with all that, enjoy Monday. I would love to see images. Please um, share them with me. You can send them to Petrova's Performers at gmail.com. And you can also send them to Petrova at photographybypetrova.com. And you might have one featured on my YouTube channel. So thank you again and have a wonderful day and happy captures.